Hello everyone, in this video we will be taking a look at the op-amp differentiator circuit in LTSPICE. Here I will be performing simulations to obtain the frequency response both for the magnitude plot as well as the phase plot and transient analysis for different input signals such as a normal sinusoidal input signal, a square wave input and a triangular wave input. So let's get started. So here in LTSPICE we have a normal practical differentiator schematic with the feedback feedback capacitor and the feedback resistance in parallel in the feedback loop and the input capacitor as well as input resistance. Here to get the frequency response, we'll first move to the sinusoidal signal input component, right click on it. Here we'll delete the normal values of the sinusoidal signal and instead of that make the AC amplitude 1 under the small signal parameters tab and make this information visible in the schematic. Then we'll run an AC sweep analysis using the analysis analysis CMD. For that go in the AC analysis tab, select nature of sweep as decade, 1000 points per decade, start frequency of 1 hertz and stop frequency of 100 kilohertz. If we run this simulation and probe the output signal, we will get the frequency response. Here on the grid we can see that the x-axis is a logarithmic scale. Now as we can see here the dotted line is a phase plot and the solid line is a magnitude plot. To see them one at a time we can go to one of the axes. So I'll go to the degrees axis for the phase plot. Right click on it and select the don't plot the phase option. Now we can only see the magnitude plot. We can also do it the other way around. Click auto to bring back the phase plot and don't plot the magnitude. Here we'll only see the phase plot. Now looking at the magnitude plot we can see that the gain starts increasing from a negative value of minus 40 db reaches a peak point of 13.722 db and then starts going down again. The frequency at which it reaches its maximum point and then starts decreasing again becomes the corner frequency fb and in this case it is 1 kilohertz. Also we have another frequency which is unity gain at 0 db gain we have a frequency of 100 hertz. This becomes our FA. Now to obtain these values of FA and FB we can go back to our calculations and obtain the values of our capacitors and resistors accordingly. So now if we want a value of FA as 100 Hertz we can assume the value of C1 capacitor as 0.1 microfarads and using this equation we can calculate the RF value to be 15.9 kilo ohms. Also using the relation that FB is 10 times FA, we can use the formula for FB to calculate the R1 value as 1.59 kilo ohms. Also taking R1 C1 as equal to RF CF, we get a CF value of 0.01 microfarads. Then for the offset removal resistance, we have the parallel combination of input resistance and and the feedback resistance it gives us a resistance value of 1.5 kilo ohm and we have added the same values in our schematic now moving on to the transient analysis for different input signals first we have a sinusoidal input signal here I have set the DC offset value 0, the amplitude as 1 volt and the frequency as 100 Hertz then using a transient analysis if we run the simulation and probe the input and output we get this result. Here we can see that the output in blue is approximately an inverted cosine wave whereas the input is a sine wave. Thus we can verify the fact that a differentiator output is basically the negative differentiation of the input signal. Now for our next example of an input square wave, we modify the sinusoidal input component to a pulse input signal and set these parameters. This will create a square wave that oscillates between voltage values minus 1 to 1 volts and and oscillates at a frequency of 100 hertz. If we run the transient analysis for 0.03 seconds again, we get this output. Here we can see that this is basically a pulse generator whenever we have a transition point in the input square wave. So this again can be seen as the negative differentiation of the input signal. While the input value is constant, we have a differentiation result of 0 and when the input is transitioning to another value, we get a peak in the opposite direction indicating a negative differentiation. The width of this pulses can be decided by the RC time constant resulting from our 
capacitor and resistor values. Finally, for the transient analysis of an input triangular wave, we set our input sinusoidal signal component as a pulse signal with these parameters. Running this simulation for transient analysis of 0.03 seconds, we get this result. Here we can clearly see that given an input signal which is triangular, we get output signal which is a square wave. Finally, we can also create an observation table for different frequency values giving us an output voltage for a constant sinusoidal signal of 2 VPP. Here we can calculate the gain and gain in dB. This can be done using transient analysis for different frequency values or AC sweep analysis and then hovering the cursor over the plot. It can also be done by performing the AC sweep analysis and then exporting the LT spice data. So this has been a quick look at the op-amp differentiated schematic and simulation in LT spice. Thanks for watching.